I know all of you guys are familiar with the nice guy persona. Something that a guy puts on to make other people see him as something. It's a persona, which means that it is a way of being for other people to see you in a certain way. What I would say is for any guy who's walking around with a persona, something that he wants to give out to the world and it's not benefiting him as far as bringing women in, it's time to let it go. The nice guy persona is a thing that many guys take on throughout their life. And especially when they're little, they've been told all these things about what a nice guy means and, oh, you're such a nice guy. And he gets accustomed to that. So he goes into, you know what, since everybody is affirming this identity, then I'll just uphold it. I'll uphold all these nice guys' ways. I'll uphold all these nice guy ways of speaking. All these nice guy ways of being. But the persona that he's, he's upholding is not even a strong persona. He makes it strong in some way by trying to desperately hold on to it in every moment, but it's not something that's sustainable. And it's so crazy that the persona is not sustainable, but he's willing to hold on to it just because it feels like him. Anybody who's holding on to anything that they're projecting out to the world, they are afraid of letting it go. That's why they're holding on to it. So this video is for you guys who feel like I have some kind of persona. And many of the times I'm speaking to nice guys because these are the guys who particularly have very similar ways of acting and very sim similar ways of speaking. And for myself, if I had to think about all uh, the personas that I've went through in my life, you know, I've went through, through the persona of being like the manipulative player where I was like acting in this way and trying to be like this. I went through the persona of being like the white knight. I went through the persona of being a guy who is very, very Christian-like and only wants God to be reigning over everything and well, you shouldn't have sex until marriage. My persona was, you know, this Christian man who loves women and that wants women to be this way and don't want any guy to treat them wrong and want the world to be amazing. And every single time I took on these, <clears throat> I was desperately trying to hold on to them. From being the man who was like the manipulative player where I was getting women into my life when I was younger, like very, very little, if you guys know my backstory, very little. And just being in this way where, you know, I'm trying to speak to them in a certain way. I'm taking lines from movies. It's so funny because I used to watch movies and I used to hear these player lines and I used to use them on women. So it started, I started to build this persona of this manipulative player. And this player who, you know, could save women from all the guys out there who was the fucking most amazing man. And I got women. I did. But at the same time, what was behind that? Manipulation. I was very manipulative behind that. I would tell women I love them just so I can have sex with them. I would uh, be speaking to women and I would know that I'm not really into them. And I would just do things because I know I could. I particularly remember one girl who my brother used to date when I was younger and we were alone and she kept trying to kiss me and I kept turning my head like this and I kept turning my head and I knew that I was manipulating her but I was just doing it just because, hey, I'm a player. I'm the man that, you know, can fucking get women out there and, you know, I don't need you. And it was a persona, which means that it wasn't me. It was just something I was putting on. And I got tired of that. And from me getting tired of that, I turned into this beautiful thing called the White Knight. And the White Knight is the man who wants to save women from pain. Because through all the pain that I put them through, now I want to save them from it. So what did I do at this point? What I started to do is that I started to be around women and I started to attract women into my life who brought me baggage, who brought me so much fucking pain who bought me their back history of just luggage. It was so much for me to handle. But I was the perfect mate because I knew that I was the one that could uphold all that shit. And I was desperately trying to hold on to the figure in their mind that I was the man who cared. I was desperately trying to hold on to that. So when I got into relationships, I was very, very needy. I was very, very the man who wanted to always keep things at bay. I never wanted things to go wrong because I didn't want the girl to see me as a man who was trying to fuck with her feelings. 
I was trying and trying and trying and I exhausted myself trying over and over and over and over. And then I got bitter because I was like, fuck, I'm doing it all, putting in all this energy and I'm still getting all this shit back. I'm still getting women trying to manipulate me. I'm still getting women trying to give me all their baggage and tell me about all their problems and want me to solve all their problems. Why am I getting that? That was my question. I was struggling so long with this on the inside. Like, fuck man, I just want a girl who's normal. I just want a girl who didn't bring me all her shit. But what I didn't know is that I was the perfect counterpart to that. Because somebody who has a lot of back history of pain and bullshit, they attract somebody who can uphold all that. If they haven't dealt with it, they'll attract somebody with the same thing. Or somebody who's willing to just take on whatever they're going to unload. And that's what you guys may find yourself doing at some point because many guys who are really nice, at some point they become a white knight or they still have it inside them where they just want women to never go through anything that's bad. So they're always trying to do things to save them. They're always trying to do things to get the woman to be in a good place. And how much stress does it put on you? It puts so much stress on you because I know because it puts so much stress on me. And then I shifted out of the white knights and I was like, you know what? I'm just going to start being honest now. But you know what? I want to be a Christian. I want to give my life to God. And I want to walk this path. And I'm not going to have sex until marriage. So I, for five years straight, I went celibate. I'm like, I'm not having sex until marriage. And I got cheated on by two girls in that time. And in that time when these two girls cheated on me, you know, I felt so fucking like, what the, man, I'm really trying to be this good godly man. You know, women are still treating me bad. Like, what's going on? Well, of course, what I didn't understand is I was trying to get girls who were in the peak of learning about their sexuality and wanting to be sexually active. I was trying to get them to be in a committed fucking not until marriage relationship. <clears throat> and that didn't work out well. It really didn't. But in that phase, you know, of me being that Christian man and having that Christian persona, because that's what it was, because I didn't really want to be that, but I just thought that's the thing that was going to bring me happiness. And for many people who are in Christi Christianity and who are in religion, they think that this route is the route of happiness. That's what they believe. They've totally given up everything in life and went, okay, everything in the world is secular and I need to go this route. I need to go this, this very righteous, religious route because I feel like this is the thing that's going to be able to give me everything that I'm missing on the inside. And for me, what I was really truly missing was myself and the expression of who I really am. And I was trying to find it through being a Christian. So there's Christians out there who I would say are good and they follow the path and they really truly believe it and they live it out and it's the real deal which I would say is a small percentage and I would say most just from my experience most that I've been around and when I was a Christian are not the real deal they're trying to find something in this journey this journey is giving them some sort of leverage over others many of the times or leverages over uh, the society or leverages over other religions but it's not truly giving them the satisfaction on the inside because they have to block out these natural things that wants to express, which is the strongest thing I would say is sexual desire. It's the most natural thing, but many of the times when you get into a religion, it lets you know that you shouldn't have sex until marriage, which is fornication. And I was fucking eating up myself on the inside. On the inside, I just, I wanted to fuck. I really felt that, fuck, I want to go back to my lifestyle of just having sex but I don't want to be a manipulator. So yes, that journey, that persona I was putting on of Christianity, you know, it did teach me something. It taught me to be honest and I was putting on an honest persona. Like oh, I was a man that's really, really honest and I'm direct. And in many ways, you know, being honest is a godly thing. And I was like, all right, well, I'm going to start being honest. I don't want to be a manipulator anymore. But I was missing out on the part of myself that really want to express itself, which is sexual desire. So as I gave up my Christian persona, it led me back to who am I really? And all the personas that people try to force upon you, that you should take on, and all the things that you do take on that's not you, 
you have to understand that you're letting go of that persona is scary but it's the only way out for you it is very 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 scary giving up all of mine was scary at every point I remember the, the, one of the funniest ones to just share with you guys for me giving up was the Christian one because I conditioned myself into so many ways that I literally was scared to, I was scared to curse. When I, I wasn't around people and I was scared to say the word fuck. Because I was so heavily conditioned into the, the Christian persona. That's how it was for me, it was a persona for me. And I was so strongly in it where I would say fuck and my brothers and them, they would laugh and my sister, she would be like, bro, don't curse. It was a very strange transition for me and my heart would race and I'm like, man, why is all this happening? This is not me. That's how it felt. That's because I invested so much in what I was trying to uphold. And in the letting go of what I was trying to uphold, it made me free. <clears throat> it made me free to now express who I really am. And that's what you're really looking for when you're taking on these personas, is that you're looking for a way to express yourself. And you're thinking that this is the avenue that's going to give me that. Just like I thought through the white knight. Just like I thought through being the manipulative player. Just like I thought through being a Christian. I thought that all these things was giving me a route. But long did I know that none of those gave me a route. It just put me in a condition. And all of you guys walking around and wanting to meet women and wanting to be in a relationship... You have to understand that for you to really truly have the happiness in this journey with women, with understanding yourself and knowing yourself and expressing your own truth, you're going to have to see, you're going to have to see what do I have to give up? You're going to have to start really looking. It's difficult. Don't get me wrong, it's difficult. You've invested so much. You have put all of your energy into being something. And people see you as that now. And now you have to let it go. All the conditions that you've been conditioning yourself into, now you have to let it go. Because what you really are in this moment, if you're not really truly expressing yourself truthfully moment to moment, is that you're a walking condition. Whether you like it or not, you are, you are a walking condition of something that you have told yourself or something that you want other people to view you as. And neither of these are giving you what you really want. Where can you go from the point that you are now? How can you say, okay, Tony, this is the persona that I've been upholding. And a lot of times it's nice guy, many nice guy ways. But this is the persona I've been upholding, whether it be the man who has it all together, the man that's really, really perfect. Whatever it is, you're upholding a persona. I've been upholding these things, Tony, but how do I start to chip away at the ice? Because right now it feels so hard to let go. My first question to you is the persona that you're upholding right now, what has it done for you? You want to think, what has it done for me? How has it made me feel? What results has it brought me with women? When I'm in front of a girl and I'm trying to uphold this thing that I'm not even, what is it doing for me in this moment? Is it giving me a chance to really express myself? Is it giving me a chance to really have the girl like me for me? And once you look at the question and you really question yourself in that moment and say, what is it doing for you? This is when things will start to pop up for you. This is when the truths will start to pop up. Right now, the truth is, maybe you're not aware of your condition. Maybe the truth is, is that you're living so strongly in it that you don't even know that you are. Maybe you just think that you want to get the women that you really want with the persona that you have right now. Maybe that's the truth right now for you. But I must tell you that <clears throat> a, 
persona is fake. It's not you. So the fact that it's not you, why are you holding on to it? People walk around holding on to everything that's not them. Every belief that's not a truth for them. Every condition that feels safe. Afraid to let go. And in the letting go, they feel like they're losing something. And they are. They're losing who they're not for who they are. That's what it is. All these personas that I was talking about, you have to understand that you're losing that for you. But if you're not willing to lose that, you will never find you. You will never be able to express the you that wants to come out. The you that wants to express something to a woman. The you that wants to look her in the eyes and not look away. The you that wants to be in front of her and say something truthful and then when she tests you, be able to stand your ground. That's the you that wants to come out. But the thing that you're holding on to is in confliction with that. These conflicts that happen inside of us literally stem from what are you trying to hold on to that's not benefiting where you want to go or benefiting who you want to be. The chipping away is the questioning yourself. That's what it is. Tony, how do I chip away at the ice? You need to question any persona that you're upholding. And really honestly question it. Say, is this something that's really giving me what I want? Is this something that I can say that I'm happy having the rest of my life? Because if you want to know what's one of the best ways for you to be able to change, is this. <clears throat> you need to first question whatever it is that you want to change. First question it. Right now we're talking about personas. Put question whatever persona you're putting up that's not you. Now, when you question it, what I want you to do is that I want you to go down a track in your life. See, what would it be like if I stayed like this 10 years from now? And really feel into it. You need to like sit with yourself and go, if I did this 10 years from now, where would I be at? How would I be? What would I feel like? Would I have the women I want? Would women respect me in the way I want to? Feel into it. Now what I want you to do, is I want you to go 20 years from now and do the same thing and go all the way to the point of the end, totally the end before you leave the earth, before you leave this physical form, I want you to go all the way to the end. And when you're going through this process, I really want you to fill into, is this the thing that I want? Because that is what you're moving toward. If you feel bad feelings, that is good. That is great. You need to feel bad feelings. You need to shake yourself out of this rut of conditioning that you've put yourself into. You've allowed this. You have. Many of the times, the conditions that we bring into, we've allowed it. Now, don't get me wrong, a lot of this is not your fault because we've been conditioned ever since we were little. And at times when we weren't mature enough to be able to go, no. But at some point you knew that in this moment I shouldn't do this, but then you did it. So you start allowing it. So anything that's happening in your life and the results you're getting is the result of you. And you can control it. That's the good thing about you guys looking at my videos is that I let you know that you can't control what you have been conditioned into. It's not just running your life. Well, it is running your life, but you can control it. That exercise that I gave you of looking down a path in your life, I learned that exercise and it helped me dramatically. And I remember sitting there and going, what if I kept doing this behavior? What if I kept not expressing what's true for me? What would happen? I would be in front of people 20 years from now, right now I'm 25, I'll be in, it wasn't now when I did it, I did it at 22, I remember doing it at 22 and 21. I was like, fuck, I would be in my 40s and I would feel so bad and I just start feeling into like, fuck, what if I kept, kept the same behavior for 20 more years, 30 more years, to the end of time till I was on my bed looking at life and going, what if I just would have expressed myself? One of the great things that I've come up on in my life is 
a video and it was by a woman and she was talking about the five regrets of dying. And one of the regrets of dying is that I wish I just would have expressed myself. And that in itself, and when I saw that, I started crying. Because I'm like, there's so many people that you have to understand that she did that documentary or that that uh, study on many, many different people. And the things that came up the most frequently was I wish I would have expressed myself. That's one of the things. So this shit is real, man. You, ha you don't have time to waste. Many of you guys who are out there, you think that you have all the time in the world, but you're actually running out of time. Because when you, when you, when you're born, time is actually winding down. And you guys don't have time to waste anymore. It's now time for you to understand that the conditions that you've been conditioned into, they don't have to, they don't have to keep running you. You can completely change everything just with you making a choice that you want to and you'll commit yourself to whatever you need to do to get that. So I hope this is a wake up call for you guys to understand that a persona is what it is. It's something that you've conditioned yourself into, but it is not you. And the moment that you let go of the persona, that's when you'll know who you are. And that's when you'll be able to be really happy in the way you want. And you'll be able to get women who want you for you. Because now you're only attracting women who want the persona. And the persona is not you, so how about you go the other route? My product coming out June 23rd will be about being able to help you express truth. Express your truth. Not just truth, your truth. Because everybody has their own specific truth. I'm just going to leave it at that. This is Tony Solo saying, I'm out. I hope you guys enjoyed that video. You know, I'm always giving you something new. And it's also something new that I want to give you. I've created a video series, which is Approach to Bedroom. And I'll be showing you everything from what do you say upon an approach, not what to say, but how you can say what you want to say, and being able to have the mindsets to go with that, being able to be in conversation, being able to take the woman home. And along this path, just giving you insights into things that may pop up to give you issues. I've covered it in this video series that, you know, packed full of about three hours of me just giving you guys everything that I can say is going to be the best from approach to bedroom. If you want this, it's totally free. If you want this, click the link below and what will happen is that you'll get a video series sent right to you and check it out. Until next time, I'm out.